Yo, Brace Your Skills Clinics back with another video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Um, start my day a little early, running some errands back on the iPad. Got to sit nice and comfortable, so bear with me. Uh, but, you know, I told y'all I was going to get into my thoughts and opinions on Chip England, man. Like, Chip England, um, you know, he's now the assistant coach or one of the assistant coaches for the Oklahoma City Thunder, which, <laughs> you know, I got I got a lot of opinions about that move. Um, first, first of all, I think it's it's an excellent move for the Thunder. I mean, being a, that we're in the same division, same conference. I mean, all of the young talent that they have. I mean, can you imagine what Chip is going to do with? With uh, with Shet and and Giddy and Shay and all those guys, like he has a lot to work with, man. So I, I I'm I'm telling y'all firsthand, like the Thunder, the Thunder's gonna be a team to be to be dealt with for the next ten years, man. And I think their rebuild, they might come back stronger than what they were with with Katie and them eventually. Of course, it may not be in the foreseeable future, like within the next two, three years. It's going to take some time. But, uh, man, that rebuild they got down there with all those young players they got, all those new draft picks they got, and then, you know, the possible big three that I think they're forming between Shed, Shea, and uh, Josh Giddy, man, that's – man, Thunder got something cooking. And, you, and they got the right guy to help develop those players as far as uh, shooting ability. So, you know, man, shout out to the Thunder. That was a great move. You know, Presti and his history with the Spurs. So, I mean, it was an easy call for Chip to make that move. But as as for the San Antonio Spurs, I've, I've watched a lot of different people speak on it. Some people, you know, were hurt by it. Um, some people felt like, ah, we you know, we'll just find somebody else. Um me being a, a, a basketball trainer myself, I know that there are a lot of trainers out there. Um, the Spurs are going to find somebody that's going to be able to, you know, improve people's shot and develop players still. It could be a former Spur. Like, I think I think I could see Ginobili being, like, involved with player development or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I think the Spurs will find somebody, but... It is tough to know that, you know, Chip has been with our organization so, for so long and he's been behind the development of so many good players. And to see him choose not to return, um, I don't care what's reported. I don't care what people think or say. I mean, that is a little bit of a red flag because, you know, what, like, why now? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, why now? Um, why would he decide to not be a part of the Spurs rebuild? You know what I'm saying? I, I, those are the questions that I have as far as uh, the move that Chip made is, you know, what the reasoning behind um, the reasoning behind the move now. You know, was it financial? I mean, if it's financial, I think I don't think nobody should really <laughs> knock him for that. You know what I'm saying? It might it might have been a financial thing, but I don't know, man. Me being a, a, a real Spurs fan and me, you know, since probably within the past five to ten years since I've been coaching really start to dive in deeper with uh, these assistant coaches on all these NBA teams that are involved with player development, like Chip, like uh, uh, somebody like Phil Handy. Like, I'm, I've been really, you know, doing my research and homework because I'm in that field. So I'm starting to see, like, how important certain guys like those guys I just mentioned are to teams. I mean, you know, look at the Lakers. I mean, they had a coaching change. They um, got rid of Vogel brought in Darvin Ham, and they got rid of every coach on the staff from Vogel staff except for Phil Handy. So that shows you how important these player development guys are. And not only that, these, these guys, if you guys don't realize, I mean, the head coach have good relationships with the players, but it's really these player development coaches that, that really get the best relationships with, uh, with these players because they're the ones that are probably in the lab with them the most. You know, the head coach are the ones that are strategizing and they may talk to them and motivate and everything. But it's really the player development coaches that are really putting the real time in with these players trying to improve their game and 
work on their craft. So, you know, w with that comes a lot of relationship building. So you got a guy, look, for example, like Phil Handy, you know, LeBron would not, <laughs> LeBron would not be too fine if the Lakers got rid of Phil, you know what I'm saying? So they had to keep him, not just because of the excellent work he does, but the relationships with the top tier players and everybody else that he has with those guys, it makes it hard to remove a guy like that. So when I go back to Chip England, it's like, dang, man, I, I really want to see him stick around for this rebuild so that he can kind of help Keldon. I mean, Keldon's jump shot improved tremendously, bro. Like, like it's kind of like, dang, man, right when Keldon's making that transition. I mean, I still see Keldon making the transition because he's in the, you know, he's in the lab. These are still pros. Chip is not. There's other great shooters in the NBA that never touched Chip England. So, you know, of course, these guys can still get the job done. But it's still something about that connection. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's equivalent to a, a a good quarterback having a great relationship with their offensive coordinator, and then you got to switch offensive coordinators. The quarterback can still do their thing. The quarterback can still possibly be fine. But sometimes, man, a quarterback just has so so much chemistry with that offensive coordinator. Like, they know each other and, and read each other like a book to the point where um, – you know, it's, it's tough for that quarterback to see that offensive coordinator go. So I just, you know, I just hope the Spurs, you know, whoever that, that guy is that they bring in to basically take over uh, Chip's duties, hopefully that guy is excellent. And hopefully it's somebody in-house already that the, that the players already know so they can kind of keep that relationship going. Um, the Spurs are pretty smart about who they put as far as, in coaching positions. I mean, that's why we produce so many head coaches. So I don't think the Spurs are going to drop the ball on replacing Chip. Um, I think bringing in Brett Brown was a, a great move for us. I know that's something that's not going to be glorified because he's not on the court, but Brett Brown was there for Philly's rebuild. The trust the process rebuild, Brett Brown was a part of that. Now, once they got there, you know, they had to, you know, there was about winning and there was better candidates like a Doc Rivers sitting around. But as far as like going through the tough times, it was Brett Brown. Brett Brown was the one that, you know, got them out of that. Just like, you know, like the Warriors, when they went through their tough times, it was Mark Jackson that was, you know, coaching that team. So I think Brett Brown as an assistant to Pop, maybe one day he may replace Pop, who knows, but, um, you know, I'm just using that as an example, not going off topic, but the Spurs usually do a good job of putting the right guys in certain positions, especially when it comes to the coaching staff, or else they wouldn't have this many uh, former Spurs assistant coaches as head coaches and are being successful. So I wouldn't worry too much about Chip not being there. I just hope that, you know, whoever is there is kind of more in-house and is really good at what they do, and the players have a great relationship with them so they can kind of keep this train going. But we're going to have to deal with the Thunder for the next few years. And Chip, being behind those young, talented players, it, the th I'm giving the Thunder. I think Thunder's going to gonna improve this year. They may compete for a play-in. But I'm looking at 2023, 2024, the Thunders are going to start really making some serious noise in the West, bro. I, I see it. They have a lot of young talent, and I think they're making the, the right moves as far as, you know, building around the players and, um, doing what's best for their overall development. So shout out to the OKC Thunder, man. I think they're making some excellent moves. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Chip England, man. I'm a def I'm a huge Chip England fan. I study a lot of his stuff. Um, I use some of his shooting drills with my own players, um, to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm just a huge fan of, of what he does and how he teaches uh, shooting mechanics. Um, so yeah, man, tough to see him go, but I think the Spurs will be fine. And yeah, go Spurs go once again. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. We out.